Happy Transfer Tuesday, the day of the week where we take a look at our finances to see if there's any money moves we can make towards a positive financial future. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, <laughs> I was not able to do any saving or investing uh, in order to better my financial future this week just because it has been a low pay week following a job transition and a move and all of those things. I did get my first paycheck from a new position though, so I'm gonna share that. <laughs> it is, like I've explained a couple times, it's a it's a weird like transition phase for this new job. I am in a training or certification phase, so I'm not able to work my days at sea back to back like I will be able to in the future. I just have to do one and then get completely like edited and debriefed on it before I'm given permission to go again and now the weather has been kind of working against me here <laughs> and other factors as well so I'll talk more about that in a second but if you are new here I am working at sea now on commercial fishing vessels and I've done this job 14 years ago and now I'm back doing it again because it is a job that's actually in my field which is marine science that is my heart and soul's passion and so uh, and field work is something that I love I'm not a desk person so I've just I, I don't know the last couple of years I guess you could say I've just been trying to find a work situation that works for me mentally and like happiness wise. I realize it's not the best time to be doing that. The job market is tough right now. The economy, even though it's, I think we have like a good economy right now, a strong economy, but it doesn't mean the job situation is great. I know so many people are struggling with jobs, with making rent, with putting food on the table, and I, I know that. So I'm still like wildly grateful to have a job. Please don't ever think otherwise. Lately in just talking through these struggles I've been dealing with, I'm getting a lot of like, you should be grateful, you should be thankful you're not homeless, there's so many other people that have it worse, and like, I know. I know. I know the income I'm making right now is not what I'm going to be having in the future. It's just a little bit of a turbulent phase with the added stress that I am moving again at the end of July to a new place, new location. <laughs> I don't know where yet. And so it's just a lot to balance right now, but I'm just trying my best. First money move I wanted to share is from Facebook Marketplace. I, you guys know last week I bought a hydration backpack for myself. I've been wanting one for a long time, just a little backpack to take pretty much every day. I go somewhere and I walk for hours at a time, whether it's in the woods or in a new town just to explore. Who knows? I'm always walking somewhere and I just wanted a backpack. And last year I bought a backpack I thought was gonna be like the best thing for that. No, it was horribly uncomfortable and way overpriced. I listed it on Marketplace maybe like four months ago, well before I moved. <laughs> and I was kind of waiting to buy a new one until after that one sold, but kind of gave up and just whatever, just let it hang out on Marketplace, figured maybe someone would order it eventually. And three days after I bought that hydration pack pack last week off of Fav Facebook Marketplace, three days later, the one I've had listed for months sold. So how cool is that? It was like serendipitous timing, I think. Three days later, when I've had that sucker listed for months, how crazy is that? So I spent $27 on the uh, bag that I bought last week. This one sold for $45, but like my payout was $36.50. So I came up $9 in the whole backpack exchange. <laughs> So yay, $9.50. How cool. I've been waiting to sell that for so long. Oh man. And I've been putting off buying a new one, and there we go, whoop, within three days of each other. Now, the second money move is my first paycheck from the new job. And this paycheck is my first full pay period. I'm in my second pay period now. But this paycheck had only two C days on it, plus one morning at the dock and like a few hours of paperwork. And 
I checked and it also includes my reimbursement for some gear that I had to buy for the job, like my new boots and a safety knife. And the new gear was $161. <laughs> my paycheck altogether was $885.34. <laughs> That's after taxes, of course. So that is two C days, a little bit of paperwork, a morning at the dock, and $161 of reimbursement that was not even taxed. So definitely a light paycheck. And the one that will be paid out in two weeks from the pay period I'm in currently will be even smaller because this pay period is only going to have two C days on it. And that's if supposedly my next C day is on Friday. That's if... <laughs> the boat goes fishing and I'm able to work that day. If not, it'll have one sea day on it and that'll be like after taxes and maybe a $250 paycheck for that bi-weekly pay period. Let's just hope Friday goes well. <laughs> I don't know why. I have not been on a boat since last Tuesday, right? Was that the last day? I think so. I didn't get approval to go on this fourth final training trip until Friday morning, maybe? I don't know why there's such a delay and why there's no day trips until Friday, but it is what it is and not much I can do about it. I just have to hope for the best. <laughs> So certainly this month altogether and last month and probably next month is just not, I'm not going to be able to save any money. In fact, between that paycheck I just got and the very small one I'll have coming in my next paycheck, I will have be having to use savings to cover the bills since these paychecks are not even going to cover rent. So that's okay. We know we're just in a temporary uh, weird phase. <laughs> and I do hope things will be better going forward. It stinks. I feel like I am very much just like sitting here waiting in the breeze <laughs> for, for work, which is not fun. Certainly with any job change, there is some fluctuation that you need to work through and, and location change with me moving soon that's a drain on the bank account as well. And so it's just that these things are happening together. It just is certainly not a comfortable feeling. Even though I have emergency savings for this kind of thing, it still doesn't feel great to go backwards. And certainly I would love to be doing other things during this time. There have been plenty of you that have asked if I can get a second job and, you know, do something else to supplement. And certainly there are options. It's just a little bit complicated by the fact that I don't have a schedule. <laughs> this is the first time where my, like my next boat trip has been so far out. I was just told on Friday, maybe it was Saturday, that my next boat isn't until Friday. That's not usual. The first three trips, it was like, you know, we're been scheduling a boat almost every day if we can. As soon as I'm approved, schedule. If the boat doesn't go, we'll schedule another one that day for the next day. And so this weird long stretch, I don't know what it's about. I'm sure there's a reason. I don't think it's weather, but it could be. It's also, it could be regulations. The commercial fishing industry is just very regulated and dynamic and it's changing all the time. There's going to be so many external factors that play into when there's a boat available for me. I think this longer stretch between boat trips is not normal. So trying to add a other part-time job to help supplement this, I would have to find an employer that's totally okay with me having a completely random schedule and not knowing whether I'm going to show up that day or not. You know, if I'm scheduled for a boat, it seems like a 50-50 chance at this point whether or not the boat is actually going to fish and I'm going to be able to go on that trip or not. To find another job that would be okay with me, like, I may or may not show up tomorrow, so like, if the boat doesn't go, yeah, I'll show up over here. But if the boat goes, I won't be here. Like, I can't imagine what other job would be okay with that. I'm sure there's some options out there, but I just... I haven't seen them advertised, so maybe I'm wrong, but... And then, of course, there's always other things like, you know, delivering food or Instacart or whatever, and totally. 
I have signed up for both of those things at different places I've lived in New Hampshire. I haven't here, just because here, I've only been here a month and it's been kind of a shit show, so. Uh, but in other places, there's a long wait list to get approved to be able to deliver for those services. It's not like you can just sign up and start going. Maybe it is like that in the cities and more populated areas, but in the locations that I've been in, where I've tried to sign up for those services, I have been put on wait lists for both delivering food, I think it was DoorDash, and um, Instacart. DoorDash, it took me, it was like a year and a half later before I got an email one day and was like, oh, there's a need for more drivers in your area now. And I was like, totally forgot I signed up for that. So those options are there, but they're not always like immediate. And I honestly haven't tried here at this location yet just because yeah things have been upheaval since I've been here and the whole apartment situation has kind of been taking the forefront of my focus and the boat anxiety and like am I going out tomorrow am I not am I going out tomorrow am I not it's just been it's been a lot but certainly once I get settled in a new place and figure out where the heck I'm going and where I want to be for the next foreseeable future I guess <laughs> and I know I've talked about it before but I took this job to have work-life balance and I was adamant about the 12 C days a month thing and that's just that's me I have seasickness anxiety and and previous like traumatic experiences on boats that um, limit me a little bit in the f in the fact that I only want to be out there one day at a time now just because of those prior experiences and so I only want single day trips so that comes into it a little bit but now as I am feeling a little bit better I've only been on about three times now since I've taken this job and it's gotten seasickness wise it has been progressively better each time so I'm feeling hopeful and feeling like I just need to get my sea legs and get readjusted to being on a boat and doing this all the time and figuring out the ways that work for me to combat nausea and seasickness and have a more pleasant experience out there and I think all of that will help me feel better about taking maybe longer trips in the future in fact I was thinking about starting that conversation with my employer and being like, okay, maybe if there's not a lot of day trips, maybe we can look at two to three day long trips and like, but it's a comfort level thing for me. It's a psychological thing for me <laughs> to get to that point just because of those traumatic experiences. So I'm trying to open myself up to more work opportunity while being cautious of my physical well-being and mental that's mental too 100 percent. it will get better <laughs> i just need to work through this time and if the boat goes friday and i do okay that should be my last certification trip all the data needs to be edited and i will need to be debriefed after that one before i'm allowed to go again but then going forward i'm okay to just take as many days as they as I can, as they come. I don't need to wait to be debriefed in between each one. We can kind of do them in chunks later on when time permits. So things will get better. I hope that makes sense. I was just wanting to clarify like the job schedule a little bit and how and or why I'm kind of not able to take on another part-time job to help supplement this one just because of the sporadic and like last second schedule of this job and also explain that I can in theory fill in the gaps with some of those more contract positions like delivering food or delivering groceries or just picking up those those kind of jobs where you set your own schedule like Uber and Lyft and all that. Those things are certainly on my mind in my back burner here. <laughs> But they just don't quite make sense just yet until I got myself settled in a location where I know I'm going to be for a while. Then I'm going to dive into exploring those more. That's enough blabbing about work. Let's talk about some fun. It is supposed to be 80 degrees today and I'm trying to decide 
whether I should run and go pick strawberries this morning or do it tomorrow morning. It's supposed to be 80 tomorrow as well and the next day. But I need to make my yearly supply of strawberry jam. Strawberry season is probably coming to a close pretty soon, especially with this heat coming. So I need to go do that. I don't know about where you guys are at, but you pick strawberries. The price on them over the last couple of years has just been... What? It is... I think it cost me about $50 last year to pick just a little box of strawberries and they wouldn't even let me bring my own container. I had to buy their cardboard thing to put it in. So let's hope it's a bit more reasonable this year. I doubt it. Highly doubt it. <laughs> you know, some things are just worth it. <laughs> that's going to cost me a little bit of money and that's okay. I need to get some jar lids as well. I am out of jar lids, I think. Also, also another thing to look forward to is this weekend, which technically it starts on Friday, but you know what? Work comes first. Let's seriously hope the boat goes and we'll just, we'll go after. No matter what time we get back, it doesn't matter. It is the first camping festival weekend of the summer, which is so exciting. It's just a little reggae festival up in Maine on, right on the ocean. Just a little campground. It's so cute. It is just like a free for all when it comes to camping. So they have music playing all day, all evening. Not all day, but you know what I mean. They open it up to camping. You can camp wherever you want. There are some space, some actual campsites, but there's also a ton of open space and you just pay for the weekend and you just go set up your tent wherever you feel like it. I'm really excited. I love camping and I love concerts. And when you can do them together, it is the most heart fulfilling thing for me. I'm so excited. I bought the ticket for this weekend. I'm going to say it was late fall, early winter. They open up the first early bird tickets and you can get them cheap. So that's what I did. So I don't have to pay for it out of pocket right now. I bought myself this weekend many months ago and I'm so excited about that. So other than groceries and the gas to get up there, certainly I'll make it worth it and swing in and see the family as well. So even though I am stressed about money right now, overall, I'm also still trying to maintain the balance of happiness and not just living in stress the whole time. So I'm sure there'll be people that think I'm crazy for going camping and spending money to go to a festival this weekend, but again, I already bought the ticket. I'm packing all the food and I need to eat whether I'm home or at a campground anyway, so... To me, it's worth it for the gas to go enjoy myself and just spend some time doing something I've been looking forward to doing since I went last year. If you guys would like a video of, you know, a camping festival weekend, a low-key one. Trust me, it's like a very small, low-key one. It's nothing crazy. It's just a quiet, cute little festival. It's not nothing huge, but if you guys would like a video about that. I can certainly share uh, the cost of the whole weekend. That might be fun. I think it would be. <laughs> I don't know. Let me know. Thank you guys for listening. As always, feel free to let me know down below what money moves you guys made towards your financial goals, and I will see you again very soon.